Hi, I am Dr. A.V.S. Suresh, practicing as senior counsel in medical oncologist and hematoma oncologist at Continental Hospitals Hyderabad. Uh, I have been practicing for almost two decades here in this field and uh, we are going to discuss an interesting case of uh, carcinoma gallbladder today. This is one of the challenging cases uh, that we have seen off late. So that is the reason why we are just presenting it. Uh, we have been seeing chemotherapy induced anemia which is very prevalent very common starting from the range of 30 to 40 percent uh, to as high as 60 to 70 percent based upon the nature of the tumor and the type of the chemotherapy you choose few people are very particular of not having blood transfusions because of cultural and other beliefs a few people uh, we don't want to give on medical ground But this lady, who is 74 years, housewife, type 2 diabetes mellitus and hypertension, was diagnosed with stage 4 gallbladder carcinoma. We all know that it is a bad disease. Uh, she underwent surgery. Uh, unknowingly that it was stage 4. So she presented with a pain abdomen and underwent uh, cholecystectomy. And then uh, during the surgery, they found that multiple uh, meds were there and the patient was different to us. We started on standard chemotherapy, gemcitabine day one and day eight, along with platinums. Uh, the interesting part is when we offered for the immunotherapy, the patient refused, uh, and then uh, we, we stick on to the standard therapy. So as we moved on, there was mild symptoms of generalized weakness, fatigue, and dizziness. We thought it's a part of uh, the low hemoglobin as well as the disease itself and uh, so much so that after some time she had uh, my difficulty in walking more than three four minutes so we examined the patient found marked pallor with a pulse of 132 blood pressure of 120 by 86 indicating that anemia is very significant very surprising thing the fall in anemia or fall in the hemoglobin level was very very rapid right so uh, she was managed as a patient of i can say high output failure sort of thing uh we gave oxygen some amount of diuretics and uh, lab in lab investigations confirmed anemia hematocrit very low rbc count as low as two millions platelets were well maintained iron studies showed relatively low iron not too low 34 and a TAPC of 125 with ferritin high. We expect ferritin to be high in most of the patients with any chronic inflammatory conditions. It indicates that it is a functional iron overload. So we did imaging to understand that there is no loss. So it is showing same mass lesion in the gallbladder, segment six by seven, and evaluation of the anemia to rule out other uh, causes were negative and uh, we could conclude that this is a very early onset developed uh, we can say uh, anemia because of the chemotherapy so classify them as a chemotherapy induced anemia and uh, we started the patient uh, first of all the patient was kept on uh, dabupoitin alpha 500 micrograms uh, to match with once in three week cycles subcutaneous and after 10 days to our surprise the hemoglobin jumped up very well 9.6 right and the more important than that is patients started feeling less fatigued breathlessness got better overall well-being improved we call it as a ql jumping up multiple notches we followed up uh, with the same thing till we achieved the target hemoglobin of around 11. We usually stop at 11. We don't go up to 12 in our in our institute. So this particular case highlights that few of the cases where you intervene early, the response can be sometimes magical. One 1.5 grams of jump within a month is phenomenal right so 
any patient irrespective of underlying disease if all other blood work rules out the blood loss and other things and if you feel that it is a chemotherapy induced anemia early institution of darbipoietin is going to make a significant uh, improvement in the patient's oral well-being quality of life as well as hemoglobin levels so we are very conscious that uh, we keep our uh, goals and targets very clear uh, we usually uh, start around 8 uh, we want to maintain the hemoglobin above 8 uh, during all time of our chemotherapy because below 8 the patients are significantly symptomatic though as per recommends 10 we stick on to the 8 uh, in our regular practice uh, using the rb point in alpha we always monitor for the dvt risk uh, fortunately this patient uh, didn't have any uh, and we always should be look uh, look out for those things and uh, in contrary to the common belief if you feel that blood transfusion is not associated with dvt no uh, let's get our uh, facts checked again it is associated with extra risk of dvt even blood transfusions you can refer to the recent publications so, the key learnings of this case is that CIA should be thought early, intervened early, and followed up diligently, observing the improvement side effect profiles. And as soon as you reach the target hemoglobin of around 10, 11, not more than 12, you should immediately stop to prevent the other associated complications. This highlights that physicians, when focusing on palliative chemotherapy, should also focus on other symptoms like cia and intubate pain